combining horror with comedy is not a new idea. Abbott and Costello had done that successfully with their movies where they met several monsters from Universal. Famous comedian Bob Hope had his own horror comedy called The Ghostbreakers. There was also the Forgotten Bowery Boys with their movie Spookbusters. Several popular cartoon characters had done their own horror comedies. Too many to list. By the 1980s, Dan Aykroyd, the popular star from SNL, the Blues Brothers, and Trade in Places, wanted to try his hand at a horror comedy. With the help of his friends Ivan Reitman, Harold Ramis, and Bill Murray, as well as actors Ernie Hudson, Sigourney Weaver, and Rick Moranis, Dan Aykroyd would go on to make Ghostbusters. This movie would go on to become one of the most popular movies ever made. It was also the start of one of the most beloved movie franchises of all time, inspiring a lot of fans to start their own Ghostbuster branches all over the world. Why do people love it so much? What is it about Ghostbusters that has made it last so long? How is it any different from other horror comedies that have come before or since? To answer these questions, we need to take a look at the movie that started it all. Released on June 8th, 1984, Ghostbusters tells the story of three paranormal scientists. These are of course Peter Venkman, the smart Alec, Ray Stans, the most passionate about the supernatural, as well as the most childlike, and Egon Spengler the smartest of the three. After their encounter with a ghost at the library, the trio are informed by the Dean of Columbia that the university is pulling their grant. In other words, they have been fired. With nowhere else to go, Peter comes up with the bold idea of starting their own ghost catching business. One of the reasons why Ghostbusters is so good it's because it's basically about a bunch of guys trying to run their own business. It's an unusual business, but it's still a business. The movie feels very grounded, despite being about a bunch of guys trying to catch ghosts. This is a far cry from Dan Aykroyd's original concept, where the movie was supposed to involve time and space. Director Ivan Reitman felt it was best that the movie take place in modern-day New York. This helped sell the idea, since I think Dan's original concept was too out there. Being able to start your own business is the American dream. Yet the movie does a great job at highlighting the problems a business owner will run into. Ray had to take out free mortgages on his house just to get the money they needed to start the business. This is something a lot of people have to do just to get money to start a business. Maybe not necessarily put free mortgages on their house, but people often have to go through extreme lengths to get the necessary money they need. Any business owner knows that starting a new business can be frustrating. You're always hoping for that first big break. The frustration of having no customers. And then suddenly, if you're lucky, getting so busy that you need to hire more help. This is what makes Ghostbusters so relatable to so many different people. Yeah, it has a lot of creative designs for the ghost. And everybody loves the sci-fi element of the movie. But the relatability of these characters is what sell this movie. The characters are so well written and acted. You feel like every actor is given their all in this movie. My personal favorite is Winston Zedmore, the everyman. 
You guys didn't think I would forget about Winston, did ya? Yet the movie seemed like they wanted to forget about him. He wasn't included in the original poster. Ernie Hudson's name wasn't even mentioned. They even had the script rewritten so Winston's role wasn't as big as what it was supposed to be. Despite this, Winston remains a very memorable character and an important part of the franchise. A lot of that is due to Ernie Hudson's performance as Winston. He has been very outspoken over the years on how it made him feel when they lessened his role. But instead of being bitter about it, he has embraced the role and has been very appreciative towards the fans for remembering his character. Each character feels like they add something to the movie, whether it be Dana having Zool in the kitchen, Winston showing how busy the Ghostbusters have gotten, or Walter Peck shutting down the containment unit, thus bringing about Gozer. The humor is a lot more subtle than most horror comedies. It doesn't go for slapstick or gross-out humor. The ghosts themselves are never treated like jokes. They are, in fact, very serious threats. Even Stay Puff is taken seriously, and he's a giant marshmallow man. The humor comes from how the characters react to the situations they're in, like how Peter acted when he encounters a possessed Dana. This allows the horror and the comedy to balance each other out. At times, it feels like a legit horror movie, not one that relies on shock value or gratuitous violence, but one that does aim to scare. Even though Ghostbusters may not be a kid's movie, a lot of the more adult jokes tend to be pretty subtle. This allows kids to be able to watch the movie with their parents. In a strange way, it makes the movie fun for the whole family. And I do realize how ironic that sounds, considering that one particular scene with Ray and the ghost. Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, and Ivan Reitman really captured lightning in a bottle when they made this movie. Little do they know that Ghostbusters will soon create a huge franchise. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later.